It's the final tribute to a fallen comrade, a sign of gratitude from thankful veterans. Some were drafted, others volunteered for military service. The members of the Honor Guard of Veterans of Foreign Wars post 8463 gladly give up their time in the service of others. Their sense of duty to country and fellow warriors brings them again and again to give one last salute. It's uh, quite a bunch of guys. We average four funerals a week. I get my list out, and I go down the list, start calling the guys, see who can make it, who can't. One guy's from Battle of the Bulge, he, he never misses a funeral. We've got World War II vets, they're there every time. Going through drills as though they were still in service, the Honor Guard keeps rifles in working order and uniforms spotless. The precision of the ceremony depends on timing, planning, and execution. The same skills hone while these men served overseas during times of conflict. It's a demanding role physically and emotionally, for the veterans of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, and now Iraq and Afghanistan wars. In 2007, this honor guard attended over 250 funerals. Commander Ken Kaur of Post 8463 in Cape Coral is an Iraq War veteran who says his unit is in high demand. Our honor guard is the only um, firing honor guard in the area. We do funerals, we do ceremonies, we do dedications. We've even done a wedding. Within two or three days, we've got to have um, the honor guard assembled and ready to go. It's pretty much a moment's notice. The tradition of military honoring their dead is as ancient as war itself. The flag-covered coffin dates to the Napoleonic Wars. The custom of three rifle volleys is said to have begun during battlefield internments to let opposing sides know about the completion of burials. Although it's sometimes hard to schedule a chaplain, bugler, and seven men for the rifle salute, Honor Guard Commander Bob Reeser makes sure that any eligible veteran gets the proper ceremony, even if he himself has to perform extra duty. I was the commander, the chaplain, played the bugle, shot, and presented the flag all at one funeral. We only had four guys, but we did it, you know. We always come through, you know. As long as I've been with them, we've never been late, missed a funeral. The Post was founded in 1968, one of the oldest organizations in Cape Coral. It became a haven for many World War II and Korean War vets who moved to Cape Coral to work or retire. Until recently, VFW Post 8463 was in poor financial health because of the loss of so many members. Now, younger vets are participating more often. In fact, a Memorial Day service at the Post attracted more than 80 people, with a recent Iraq War veteran taking part. Yep, yeah, Iraqi veteran, yeah, just joined us. And he, today was his first dress Memorial Day. He was, he was tickled pink. Yeah, yeah, he was. In fact, I was just talking to him inside. He's really excited about it. Reeser is pleased that new veterans are interested in the VFW. When he came back from Vietnam, his combat experience wasn't considered a real war, even though he has a combat infantry medal to prove it. He didn't join the VFW until 1990 and eventually became post commander. One of his favorite tributes came in 2007, when Reeser was part of a large group that welcomed home an Iraq War veteran at the airport. It made me feel good that we, we were able to give that to him. I was able to give to him what I never got. That kid had tears, he didn't know what to think. Next day, uh, two days later, he comes into the post at 11 o'clock in the morning, right when we open, driving a brand new car. He went and bought a brand new car and he said, I'm gonna take off for a couple of weeks and you know, just drive. That's exactly what I did when I came home from Vietnam. Drove around for two weeks. No plans, just anywhere I felt like going. It was great, you know. I was doing what I went and fought for to do, you know. We trust that the example set by this comrade will prove a glorious beacon to the youth of our country, who too may be called to uphold the honor of our flag. At VFW Post around the country, every day is Memorial Day, and patriotism and respect for veterans flow freely. Founded in 1899 by U.S. soldiers needing medical attention after returning home from Cuba and the Philippines, the VFW has strongly supported the rights of its 2.2 million members. That includes ladies' auxiliary members like Carolyn Ramsdale, whose husband and grandfather were in the military. She and other auxiliary members regularly visit veterans in nursing homes and hospitals. It's uh, a very nice satisfaction to go to meet the veterans and talk with them and give them comfort, really. Ask them if everything, if they're treating them all right. And 
a great organization. They're very close to my heart, the veterans. Try to do everything we can for them. We did this today. I'll be going to a funeral tomorrow. We sometimes have three and four funerals in a week. So it, you have to have time. In other words, you can't be working and, uh, and be on the honor guard. Not only do honor guard members donate their time, but they buy and clean their own uniforms, drive to the services themselves, and maintain the equipment. The Department of Defense has a program that provides flags and blank cartridges for the ceremonies. Here lies all that is mortal of a true-hearted comrade and a fearless defender of his country and his flag. The actual ceremony the Honor Guard performs is brief but poignant. It can be incorporated into any religious service and takes 10 minutes, starting with the chaplain's invocation, followed by a prepared speech given by the Honor Guard commander. Since 21 gun salutes are usually reserved for heads of state, Seven members shoot three times in what's known as a rifle salute, followed by taps and the ceremonial folding of the flag. Even though they've performed it hundreds of times, it's a duty that never gets easy. It does take a personal toll when you have to do that many or so many uh, funerals. You know, a lot of our members are getting older, and a lot, of the, a lot of the members know some of the members that they're out there honoring with our squad, and they, it hits them pretty hard. VFW Post 8463 serves more than veterans. There are many charitable and outreach components, plus regular events to keep members active and involved. The members visit schools to share their experiences. They participate in parades, ceremonies, and many other special events. The price of admission to any VFW can be high. It requires service during campaigns overseas. But it can be an important place for this band of brothers who have a unique understanding of the price of freedom. When you get off the battlefield, it's very difficult to adjust back to civilian life and, and the freedoms that, that we've provided. And it's hard to take yourself off that, that alert status. I know that from experience myself. But the guys got to realize that there's brothers here for them. And if they don't want to go someplace and get help, they can come here. They come here and sit down and talk to another veteran, somebody who's seen what they've seen and done what they've done. And we'll just talk to them. We'll get them through it. They did it for me. They got me through a lot of hard times in this post. The members here are wonderful.